listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. Today is Wednesday, October 16th. A recent installment of the State of the Bible USA 2024 report by the American Bible Society highlights that those identifying as non-religious or nuns experience less human flourishing than practicing Christians. The study, based on responses from over 2,500 individuals, shows that nuns score lower on the human flourishing index, particularly in the meaning and purpose domain, where they average 6.3 compared to 7.0 for the general population. Practicing Christians score highest in every category, suggesting a link between regular church attendance and higher levels of well-being. Chief Innovation Officer John Farquhar Black notes, quote, On measures of human flourishing, nuns score decidedly lower than practicing Christians. Despite this, there are openings as some nuns still engage with the Bible and express religious commitments. In a recent sermon at Saddleback Church, lead pastor Andy Wood encouraged congregants across their 15 Southern California locations to vote according to their faith and conscience on Election Day, November 5th, emphasizing the importance of understanding candidates' past actions and declared religious beliefs. Wood posed the question, quote, which candidate and issues more closely align with the Word of God? He highlighted concerns over inactive Christians in politics, citing research by evangelical pollster George Barna, indicating millions may not vote. Wood expressed alarm over laws in some states enabling gender transitions for minors without parental consent, describing them as evil, and criticized states allowing late-term abortions. Wood reassured the congregation that the church's thriving does not depend on election outcomes, declaring that, quote, God causes kings to rise and fall and urging believers to act responsibly while ultimately placing trust in God's supreme authority. In Boston, Massachusetts, the Satanic Temple hosted SatanCon, supposedly the largest satanic gathering in history amidst protests. The temple recently announced the opening of a second telehealth abortion clinic in Virginia named Right to Your Life Satanic Abortion Clinic, offering what it calls religious abortion services as part of a destruction ritual. Despite not being affiliated with the Church of Satan, the temple claims abortion as a religious right, especially following the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Aaron Hellion, TST's executive director, emphasized the importance of telehealth for expanding access, albeit concerns persist over the safety of online acquired abortion drugs. Reflecting these concerns, Elizabeth Gillette recounted a traumatic experience, underscoring the lack of transparency about the procedure's risks. A Christian pastor named Dia Moodley was arrested while street preaching outside Bristol University, sparking a significant conversation about freedom of speech in the UK. Moodley was responding to a question posed by a Muslim member of the public when he stated his belief in the differences between the moral standards of Islam and Christianity. He also declared his view that God created humans as male and female. His arrest by Avon and Somerset police, during which he was detained for 13 hours, has drawn criticism and an apology regarding the disposal of his signs. Alliance Defending Freedom, ADF UK, supporting Moodley, described the arrest as a violation of free speech, emphasizing the need for equal treatment under the law. Barrister Jeremiah Igionubole commented, quote, Nobody should be subject to discriminatory treatment or peacefully and lawfully sharing their core beliefs, highlighting the incident as reflective of broader state censorship trends. The U.S. Supreme Court has declined to hear a case from Grace Bible Fellowship, a Colorado church seeking protection from future pandemic-related restrictions on worship gatherings. This decision rests with a previous ruling by the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Tenth Circuit in favor of Colorado Governor Jared Polis. The controversy originated during the COVID-19 pandemic when Grace Bible Fellowship, previously known as Community Baptist Church and Denver Bible Church, successfully sought an injunction against certain state-imposed lockdown measures. However, as Colorado lifted its pandemic restrictions, U.S. District Judge Daniel D. Domenico ruled the church lacked a case, calling their claims of future government oppression not plausible. Circuit Judge Nancy Mortz supported this, indicating the church failed to demonstrate required legal injury, making their claims moot. Cindy Clemeshire, who claimed she was sexually abused by Gateway Church founder Robert Morris from the age of 12 in the 1980s, is urging Texas lawmakers to prohibit the use of non-disclosure agreements, or NDAs, in child sex abuse cases and to extend the statute of limitations on such offenses. Clemeshire recounted to the House Committee on Judiciary and Civil Jurisprudence how Morris's lawyers offered to cover her therapy costs on the condition she signed an NDA, which she declined. 
At an October 2nd hearing, she emphasized that banning NDAs would aid survivors, stating, quote, it's part of the healing process to be able to share your story. Chairman Jeff Leach expressed support for this legislative change, noting that NDAs often protect perpetrators. Clemeshire also seeks restitution and highlighted the need for extended civil statute limitations to pursue justice. Kansas City Chiefs kicker Harrison Butker, an outspoken pro-life advocate, endorsed former President Donald Trump in the 2024 presidential election, calling him, quote, the most pro-life president. Speaking on Fox News' The Ingram Angle, Butker emphasized the importance of prioritizing the protection of the unborn, aligning himself with Trump and Senator Josh Hawley, Republican from Missouri. Butker's stance comes despite some pro-life criticism against Trump for his recent positions on abortion laws. Highlighting his pro-life commitment, Butker criticized U.S. abortion laws, noting that the unborn are, quote, the greatest victims in our society. His views were also evident when he wore a tie at the White House, captioned in Latin to, quote, protect the most vulnerable, following the Chiefs' Super Bowl 57 victory. Amid Missouri's upcoming ballot decision on Amendment 3, which could enshrine abortion rights in the state's constitution, Butker's stance remains strong in the debate. Thank you for listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. We encourage you to follow the show in your podcast player of choice, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or third-party podcast players like Overcast and Pocket Cast. You can also download the Edify app for free and listen to all the podcasts on the Edify network by clicking the link in today's podcast show notes. We would also appreciate a five-star rating in Apple Podcasts and Spotify to help us reach a wider audience with the Christian Post daily podcast. You can also subscribe to our daily newsletter and get the top headlines delivered to your inbox by clicking that link in the show notes as well. Thank you again for listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast.